Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Beyond the Book. My name is Ashley. And my name is Sarah. We created this series for families like yours. We're going to explore how a book can inspire you to read, learn, and create together. The inspiration for this episode is the book When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Muhammad. And I've gotten really fascinated with graphic novels, so we're going to talk about the format of graphic novels and just how they're different from comics and why they still are worth reading. So we start our story with this two-page illustration. We have Omar and his younger brother Hassan, and they are behind barbed wire. They're looking out into a group of people. They're actually looking for their mother that they've been separated from, and this is the beginning of their story. It conveys a lot of emotion to the reader and really sets the tone for the rest of the story. Mark Twain advised writers to show and not tell their readers what's happening in the story. And being able to use illustrations in a story really helps that along. So in this first illustration that Sarah shows, you can see what life in a refugee camp might be like with very little text to describe what it is. So you can see there's cinder block buildings, there's only one tree, looks like it's dirt ground, probably pretty dusty and hot. And I mean, that's a lot to take in just by looking at two pictures with very little text. And then just to show you what a graphic novel is like, we've got panels on the next page. So this looks a lot like a comic. We have a lot more text, but we still, the story is still being moved through with just facial expressions and there's still a lot going on. So some of these pages to me look like comic book pages. Is there a difference between comics and graphic novels? So one of the main differences is that this is still in a novel format. So we still have a beginning and a middle and an end to the story. We have a definite conclusion at the end to the story. Even if there's more than one in a series, the end is going to be the completion of that story that takes place. Okay. So think of it as visual storytelling. For instance, we have this two page illustration. This shows the refugee tents from above. Um, this is the world of Hassan and Omar. So you showed some pages where it does kind of look like a comic book, mm -hmm. um, but I understand now that this is a graphic novel. Let's compare it though to a real comic book so we can really see the difference. Yeah, a great example is Calvin and Hobbes. Maybe you've read this amazing comic. Um, inside, you've got those panels. So we saw panels in our graphic novel, but we've got a story that happens in one page. And then we got a separate story that happens on one, another page. It's a huge narrative, right? about Calvin and Hobbes. But at the end of the book, it's not really a resolution to the story. It's just a bunch of stories together. Okay, so I could pick up Calvin and Hobbes and read a couple pages and never look at it again and not miss any like giant. I mean, it's Calvin and Hobbes, so I'm, I'm probably missing a lot, but. Right, I mean, it's amazing, right? <laughs> but <laughs> it is a comic because it's serialized. You can pick up any of the books in any order and read it and still get a lot of enjoyment at it, but it's not that novel format. So let's debunk some myths about comic books and graphic novels. Myth number one, they don't really count as reading. False. They definitely count as reading. It's text, it's story, it's illustration, it's totally still reading. Myth number two, all comic books and graphic novels are about superheroes. False. Okay, so a lot of comics use superheroes. That's absolutely true. But graphic novels are really diverse, especially in the last couple of years. So just looking at some of the titles we have here, we've got classics that have been made into this format. We have even The Magic Treehouse, which your kids might know and love in a graphic novel format. So we have even more illustrations about our favorite stories. Um, there's also just subject matter, like with when stars are scattered, we're talking about refugee camps, we're talking about starvation and lack of education. Um, this book is about anxiety and eating disorders. So you can talk about a lot of different subjects and there's also a lot of different genres too, as well. If you think about it, storytelling and art always go together and we do it naturally from a very early age when we're learning to draw and read and write letters. So think about when your kid brings you a drawing that they've made and you ask, what is it? And usually it's not, it's a picture of dad. Usually you get, it's a whole story about how, well, this is dad giving me a balloon because it's my birthday and we're going to have a chocolate cake and go swimming at the pool. And I'm going to go down the big slide 
And the story can sometimes go on and on and on, even though you're not really seeing all of that in the picture, your child's imagination is at work and their storytelling skills are being honed. And it's all a very important part of learning how to read. Absolutely, and I actually want to read that book. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about that. Yeah, I mean, there's just different ways to explore art. So graphic novels is another way to explore stories through art. You could take your family to the art museum just to look at the paintings and maybe make up a story behind the figures that you see in the painting, or just go home, like you said, and do your own drawing contest and just see what comes out of just drawing together as a family. The library will offer some art making opportunities this fall. For example, at Midtown, there's What's Up Wednesdays for grades six through 12. What's Up Wednesdays will feature hands-on art making activities, crafts, maybe some trips to the makerspace, all to get your creative juices flowing and have an opportunity for self-expression. There's just so much to explore with the world of art and so many stories to tell. So we hope you give maybe graphic novels a chance um, just to see if maybe your visual learner has a lot of fun with that. And remember, the object is to love reading. So this is just another option for you. So go out there with your family and read, learn, and create together. Thanks so much for watching.